I stand here before you as a Palestinian American as well. I come from two Palestinian immigrants whose families and parents were also exiled following the Nakba in 1948. To say I'm exhausted and devastated is beyond means. I don't even have the words to describe what this week has felt like, but certainly it's not the same kind of devastation and exhaustion that my Palestinian brothers and sisters in Gaza or the West Bank are experiencing at the hands of Israel's apartheid system. Following Sunday's attacks, Israel, with the help of our own country, pumped out reckless propaganda of Hamas beheading children and raping women. And while the information was debunked, the costs have already been paid and they've been grave. As of this morning, the latest estimated number of deaths is more than 1,537 Palestinians in Gaza, including 500 children and 237 women. One third of this death toll is children. And yet very little condemnation has come from our elected officials and our administration. In this moment, the US government has proven that its moral compass ends at its allyship with Israel. And that a relationship with the apartheid government is worth more than Palestinian lives. The misinformation that has been amplified by our, by our very own president has paved wi the way for mass atrocity and genocide before our own eyes as the world watches. Lawmakers on the left and the right, as we've witnessed this week, from Lindsey Graham to Richie Torres, have used the opportunity to demonize Palestinians in order to cultivate, to cultivate anti-Palestinian hatred, which has given Israel cover to openly commit its horrendous crimes. We demand the U.S. government to call for immediate de-escalation and ceasefire, which includes calling for humanitarian assistance, the establishment of safe zones in the Gaza Strip, safe passage of humanitarian aid and medical supplies, as well as resuming access to water and electricity and fuel for medical facilities in the Gaza Strip. The root causes of this violence is clear. It is decades of Israeli military occupation and apartheid and U.S. complicity in this systematic oppression and our government must address this. What is occurring right now is not war. Let us be clear. What is happening right now and what the media is spreading is not war. This is decades of occupation. This is mass murder and this is going on the brink of genocide. Israel, much like it's done for decades, is actively committing the war crime of collective punishment and targeting civilians. They've been carpet bombing entire neighborhoods and cities in Gaza, dropping over 6,000 bombs in only a few days. That's more bombs than the US dropped on Afghanistan in a few days. While it's been under siege for 16 years, Israel has imposed an entire complete siege on Gaza, meaning it's cut off all food supplies, electricity, water, and fuel. People are no longer hearing from their families, um, hospitals are completely running out of resources and have been called graveyards at this point. Right now, over 340,000 Palestinians have been displaced in the Gaza Strip and over 220,000 are sheltering in 92 UN schools which have been turned into shelters. Pending Israel's evacuation order last night for the entire Northern Strip, of Gaza, telling 1.1 million residents to evacuate south of Wadi Gaza, we are on the brink of witnessing genocide, and as a nation, we're enabling it. Giving Netanyahu and his extremist government, which President Biden himself has described as the most extreme Israeli government he has seen in the last 50 years, more weapons, diplomatic immunity, and political support as he has this week is throwing a match into a dry hayfield, and that's exactly what we've seen unfold. A ceasefire and de-escalation must be demanded of the Israeli government immediately. Otherwise, the blood of the atrocities that have been committed and the genocide that is about to unfold will be on the American government's hands. Thank you.